In this video, I'm gonna be covering the process on painting furniture with real milk paint. If you would like to watch the process on how I built this chair, then that video is linked for you down below. Now, of course, I'll be showing you how to use real milk paint to go on raw wood, but this will also stick to drywall, stone, and unsealed brick and concrete. If you're starting with a piece that already has some latex paint on it, you don't need to get that back to bare wood, but you should remove any, any uh, bits that are peeling up. But then all of the other steps I'm about to address will be the same. Now, what brought about me painting this, I was heading to Nashville to help my friend, Greg Pennington, build a large porch. And he is actually the master chair maker who taught me how to build this chair. And he is very experienced with using real milk paint and offered to show me the process. Let's start off with the product that I'm using. I ended up taking forever to decide on my color for my chair because there's so many beautiful colors to choose from. However, I did end up going with a color called Barn Red from the Real Milk Paint Company. Now in the chair making world, it's traditional for chair makers to paint their chairs red first and then black on top. In this way, as spots naturally get worn down, the red will slightly show through. So I know painting it red and leaving it that way will cause the traditionalists to lower their brows at me, but it's what I think is pretty. Real milk paint comes in powder form, which means it doesn't have a shelf life. It won't go bad. To mix up the powder into a paint, it takes a one-to-one -one ratio of powder and water, meaning you take a scoop of powder and add the exact same amount of water. Every container comes with a marble so you can drop it into your mixing container. Here, I'm just using a washed out yogurt container. And then add a drop of the anti-foaming agent. Then just shake it up. After giving it a good rattle, you'll need to let it sit for at least 15 minutes. While that's setting up, I'm going to spend some time prepping my chair. Greg does this thing where he'll tape off the underside of a chair so that he has a spot to sign and date it. So I taped off a square and then used a blade to cut some arches around each one of the legs. By this time, it's been more than 15 minutes, so I went back to my paint and stirred the mixture by spinning that marble inside around in circles. You don't need to go crazy, it's just a little bit, and then it is painting time. Let me just show you an example how to paint. Like, I know this is ridiculous. Are you gonna put the first thing of paint on my chair? No, you are. Okay, Ding. Okay, now you can do it. <laughs> when painting, there's really nothing crazy about this step. The main thing to watch out for is drips, because if you try to paint it too heavy in one coat and overlook where it runs, then it will form up little tear streaks. They can be removed, but it's more work, and it's simple to avoid if you do light coats instead. I would dip my paintbrush and then use the edge of the container to wipe off some of the excess. Then of course I was watchful as I was moving around and applying paint that no area was getting too heavy and running. After getting everything on the bottom side of the chair, then I flipped it around and started painting the rest. While I'm doing that, let me tell you a few features of real milk paint that makes them stand out from the rest. First, they have over 56 paint colors and focus on antique color palettes, which is based on traditional furniture. It is water-based, so it cleans up incredibly quick and easy. It's also a non-toxic and no VOC, so painting inside is just fine. It also dries incredibly fast in just about 30 minutes. It was morning whenever I applied my first coat of paint and then I let it sit all day while Greg and I worked on something else in the shop. Then that evening, I quickly threw on another coat of paint, but I stopped at just two. After two, it looked 100% covered, so I moved on to buffing after that, which isn't that fun, but it is necessary if you want a good looking finish. I used the finest grit of steel wool that I could find and went over the entire chair to take it from this very flat and chalky texture to more of a sheen finish. Don't be afraid of pushing too hard as it does take some pressure to get it where it needs to be. It might be hard to distinguish here in this footage, but look at it from this front edge of the seat versus the side and the top. The top still looks chalky and darker, whereas the front edge I buffed is lighter and has kind of a shininess in it. And then here I stopped after buffing half of the seat so that you could hopefully see the difference better. The right is the sheen that you're going for and the left is still waiting for me to tackle. The next step was to apply a protective finish. However, if you wanted a two-tone color choice like traditional chair makers, then next you would apply the top color choice in the same fashion. But since I was just sticking with the one, I moved on. 
Greg has his own custom mixture of mineral spirits, linseed oil, and spar varnish, so that's what I use. However, if you don't want to create your own, Real Milk Paint Company sells a few options of protective top coats you can order with your paint. For my finish, I used a chip brush and just slopped it on. I mean, not really slopped, but definitely went heavier on it than I did with the painting stuff. And that's because you don't have to worry about runs here. You just want to make sure to hit the entire surface so that it can absorb the finish. Then any excess will get wiped away with the cleaning rag afterwards. Take your time on the wiping down step to make sure you don't miss any areas or it will dry with a different sheen than the rest of the chair. After going over the entire piece, let it dry for 24 hours before applying another coat. After your first wipe down, check on it about 10 minutes or so after and see if you need to give it another wipe down. Sometimes the surface will slowly seep out the excess finish and this also needs to be removed before you leave it alone. If you've checked on it and it doesn't look like it's done that, then you're just waiting on the 24 hours to expire. So I put on two coats of paint and then three coats of this top coat finish. Since I had to wait 24 hours in between each coat, I would leave my chair out on the workbench and then apply a new coat every morning before we got to work on Greg's porch. It truly is very simple and it only takes less than 20 minutes each coat. And in the end, you end up with a beautiful, beautiful finish that is very striking look and will hold up very well over time. I know a lot of woodworkers will automatically respond negatively when a piece of furniture is painted instead of stained or clear coated, but Greg is a master chair maker and paints most of his chairs with a red undercoat and a black top coat, as it's a traditional Windsor chair style to do so. See, a lot of chairs are made up of two or three different species of wood, each part of the chair focusing on utilizing a wood that suits its function or level of strength needed instead of making it all match. So if you're about to leave me a comment, or probably already have, saying that I shouldn't have painted it in the first place, well, there is simply nothing wrong with it. If you're watching this video because you have a piece of furniture that you're looking to finish or refinish, then I hope that this video has helped you out. I wish you luck on picking out a color choice because that truly is the hardest part of the process. Everything else is very straightforward and easy. So if it's on your to-do list, then don't put it off. Of course, I have left you links to everything I use down below and I will see you on my next project. Oh, that was weird. Oh.